Good morning. Please accept my professional and personal regrets that I could not personally join you today in Zalao. We genuinely hope to attend next year. This event and your invitation are of profound importance to us at Embassy Bucharest. As the world collectively prepares to mark another International Holocaust Remembrance Day, it is the solemn obligation of all fair-minded people to measure where our current world places on the spectrum of anti-Semitism and its insidious fellow travelers of xenophobia, race hate, and otherization. Our weary populations and pandemic-addled nations are experiencing waves of malign fake news and rhetoric including a creeping resurgence of anti-Semitism. Sadly, and precisely in times past, when our world roils, the constant lurking specter of anti-Semitism emerges. This truism has been proven time and again from centuries old blood libel lies to the repeated pogroms that have bled Yash and other regions white since the 18th century forward, up to and including the rise of the NDSP. When the paradigm shifts, the most wicked aspects of our nature manifest and all too often are loosed. To see it here in beautiful Romania, a nation that has the awful distinction of having lost among the very highest number of its innocent Jewish population in the Shoah, in a country that suffered so profoundly throughout the last century is heartbreaking. To see anti-Semitism manipulated and stoked for domestic political gain or geopolitical advantage is vile. There is nothing minor about the Holocaust. There never will be. Dismissing it is reminiscent of the despicable words of Rudolf Hess, the longest serving Auschwitz com commandant, who during his post-war trial in Poland, when confronted with his murdering of three and a half million people, replied, no only two and a half million. Men, and I use the term loosely, such as Hess and Eichmann, gave the world the expression, the banality of evil. They will continue to define it for the eons to come. I would caution any who tread the path of anti-Semitism towards any means whatsoever, that they are an exceptionally insidious company. Just recently, a member of the U.S. Embassy community saw 6MWE spray painted alongside a soccer-themed graffiti in Bucharest. This means six million was not enough. We have no idea if this was the act of a fervent Holocaust denier or anti-Semite, or an incredibly awful slogan written in ignorance. But isn't ever-present vigilance the price of protecting human dignity and life. Anti-Semitism and xenophobia do not always wear a Totenkopf badge. They are just as likely to appear under a friendly banner wearing a suit or a polo shirt. The acceptance of deliberate obfuscation, denial, and the exploitation of historical amnesia insults the sacred memory of every person murdered in the defining crime of the 20th century. Every single one met the world to somebody, a spouse, a child, a partner, or a parent. There were not numbers for the Rudolf Hesses of the world to dismiss. They were people. We are losing the final generations of Shoah survivors. Collectively, we cannot allow their memories and the memories of the murdered to be lost at time, and we must not allow them to be defiled through tolerating anti-Semitism, no matter how it is packaged and to what end it is used. I ask you all to join me in remembering Edmund Burke's admonishment. The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good people to do nothing. When you see anti-Semitism, call it what it is, and that its purveyors know you are not fooled. Thank you, President Dan Haas, the Jewish community of Zalal, and all who hear this message. I wish you peace and a reflective Holocaust Remembrance Day.